Before you get trucks or vehicles to be used for your pure water factory, that is for distribution of products and for picking up your raw materials, there are several things you need to know. Now, depending on your budget, the cost of actually acquiring a vehicle might vary. Now, there are several things about getting a vehicle. The first one is there is um, new vehicles. You can go for either new ones or you can go for used vehicles. Then aside from that, again, there is diesel vehicles and there are also petrol vehicles. And also, you need to consider the loading capacity. Now, these three factors, that's new or used, diesel or petrol, loading capacity, these three factors will help you pin down and pinpoint which kind of vehicle and the kind of budget which you should have at hand for the vehicle which you are going for. Now, personally, in our own factory, we've used both the petrol trucks and the diesel vehicles. The petrol trucks are way more economical, uh, including a clip of the trucks. That's the high jet truck. They are the most common ones in the market when it comes to this distribution vehicle. Although there are other alternatives, but personally, from experience, we've used high jet truck. I will also use a diesel truck capable of carrying up to 800 bags of pure water in one go. So typically, by knowing all these major factors, it can help you understand your budget and determine which kind of vehicle you'll be going for. And when you are going for these vehicles, it's also advised that you work with a recommended seller, especially if you are buying the used trucks in Nigeria, because this will help you at least work with someone who has built some kind of authority in the sales of these vehicles and if you have any issues maybe to replace some parts you can easily discuss with the seller and you know all those issues will be resolved so buying from a recommended seller is highly advisable now the most common thing with the high jet trucks is most of them when you buy them you need to extend the carrier that's behind the vehicles Usually the carrier is a little bit smaller, so you need to add, do some kind of metal upgrade for it behind so that it can be able to carry up to that um, 80 bars capacity, 80 bars to 90 bars. If not normally, just the small follow cone carrier that comes with it, that will be able to carry maybe higher as 40 bars for it, but by extending it, you will be able to carry more. After extending the back of the carrier, the major thing again you will need to do is to brand the vehicle. Because before you take your products to the market, at least you should have a branded vehicle. I have seen some suppliers of water, they just use normal plain vehicles to distribute their products. Maybe they are trying to hide from a few um, law enforcement agencies, but it is highly recommended that you brand your vehicles so that whenever you are passing, they can be able to identify which company this is who are supplying the products and you know it will create more awareness and also boost your marketing efforts while distribution. In short, personally, we've had people who have called our call lines before and said they saw our vehicles passing, so they picked the number from there and decided to call and place an order. So you see, having branded vehicles is very useful when distributing your products in the market. It is also recommended that, like the number of trucks you work with now, this also depends on your budget. You know the factors which I mentioned earlier, that is your capacity, then the type of vehicle you want to go for, either diesel or petrol. Although petrol now is the one I recommend most because diesel is way more expensive than petrol now in the market. Now if you are going for new or used, so all these factors will help you, you know, budget and determine how many trucks you want. Some people buy two for a start, some people buy three, some people buy up to ten. So depending on your capacity and your budget, you can be able to go for the amount of trucks which you need in the market and when you are buying these vehicles as you are buying them please buy new tires especially the used ones because like the used ones we bought all the used vehicles we've bought we've had to replace all the tires all of them because most of them you see them already cracking like showing signs of bear and tear if you should start using them like that without replacing the tires, you will just be distributing your products one day or maybe you'll be on the road and you'll hear that the tire exploded. It might cause accident and it's dangerous. So please try and budget for brand new sets of tires for the number of vehicles which you are actually buying. Now, you should also make sure that you carry out routine 
servicing for the vehicles. In short, when you buy the vehicle for the first time, before bringing it down, especially in that canal area, for most of our vehicles, we did the same thing. You can ask your designated seller or your mechanic there to carry out maintenance and modifications for you. So there might be some parts, there might be some like um, tubes or some things that they will need to replace, some oil which they will need to change. It is important that they do those initial maintenance services so that by the time we start using your vehicles, it won't you know, develop any issues and the vehicle can be able to last a long period of time before you start replacing parts and start making some adjustments to the vehicles. So we also have a dedicated mechanic. One issue we had in the past was our earliest vehicles that time. One, in short, there's one of our bus which we initially used for distributing water. We just packed it now, we can't use it. Because when the bus started developing issues, the first mechanic we had, we called him, he did his own maintenance, he tried to the best of his ability what he could do. But after a while, we still observed that the issue with the bus was still there. So we took it to our other factory, our bottling factory, to see if maybe the team there, the mechanics there, could be able to do something there. But still, the vehicle is still packed. So at the end of the day, we found out that it was because this person will come and try, see what he can do. Maybe he will just do half and leave it. Another mechanic will come and touch and do his own half and leave it. So it just caused a lot of complications with the repair of that particular bus. Uh, so similarly we had to learn from that experience and our other vehicles now we have um, dedicated mechanic which we work with at least if it doesn't work we have two of them now two mechanics which we assigned our trucks to so if the first one comes because we've worked with these guys for a while and at least we know that they work in sync if this person says okay this is what is missing we call the other one he can tell us okay this is how we can get it and how they can replace it so similarly to when you get your trucks try and get designated mechanic somebody specially who will be servicing and maintaining your vehicles so that you won't have to rely on roadside mechanics and calling random people to come and touch your vehicles by the way, if you've watched the video so far and you enjoyed the information shared in this video and you find it very valuable, don't forget to like the video and also subscribe to the YouTube channel. This encourages me to you know, create more videos like this and it will you know, add more value to you. Now, when you've acquired your vehicles, you should also be aware of um, laws and regulations within your area where you intend to do the business. Now, depending on where you are, they might require some tickets, um, daily tickets for the vehicles. They might do some, you know, local government registrations. There might be some things which you need to do pertaining to that vehicle. As someone who has invested in this business, it is important for you to be aware of those laws so that you won't be found wanting. When we first started the business, even now, so every once in a while, we do run into law enforcement agencies, those on the road. There are some ticket boys you will meet. We will meet VIO, we will meet road safety. So just try and make sure they are abiding by all regulations when it comes to having a vehicle, especially fully each vehicles. Like doing registration for a private vehicle is different from doing registration for commercial trucks. So it is important you know all those laws, all those their requirements, and all those things you need to do before you can actually be on the road for selling your products. Now try to also avoid overloading your vehicle. Like these trucks, like the hydro truck, normally, like I said, even before extending that carrier, normally the capacity would be around that kind of 40 or 50 bags. But by extending the carrier, you are putting more load on the vehicle, which the vehicle is still able to manage and carry. But by the time you start exceeding that limit, like we had to speak to one of our drivers one time, he was loading his vehicle up to 120 bags. You will see the vehicle, the back will be like this, the front is as if it wants to fly. So it um, puts stress on the vehicle. And these are some of the things that makes the tires get weak. It makes the vehicle as a whole might get stressed. So it's very important that you avoid overloading the vehicles and make sure that you pack the right amount in the vehicle so that the vehicle can serve you for a long period of time and you won't have to be repairing your vehicles on a monthly basis. You know, constant repairs on the vehicles leads to more expenses 
and more expenses mean that the profit margin which you are actually supposed to realize in the business will be going into repairs of vehicles. And your staffs won't they won't consider you or they won't want to hear that you are repairing vehicles, that's why you can't pay them. You understand? Or your business, your customers won't want to hear that you are repairing vehicles. That is why you don't have light on to produce water. You understand? So it's a fast-paced business. The more you think fast, the more you put in measures that are able to prevent some of these um, losses and expenses, the better for your business in the future. Now, once you've also gotten this vehicle, where you pack these vehicles or where you store them is also important. Make sure that you have enough space in your factory. Uh, my last video where I talked about building a factory, by the way, if you haven't seen that video, I would highly recommend you. In short, go through my YouTube channel and watch everything <laughs> so that you have a better understanding of this business. But um, yeah, I did mention in that video that you should have enough space in your compound so that you can pack your vehicles. Now, depending on how many vehicles you want to get, if you are getting 10 vehicles, you should create space for 10 vehicles. If you have five, create space for five, which is one or two. And some people do start with one too. I know throughout this video, I've not mentioned one. There are some people starting a mini factory. You can also start with one truck, one small hybrid truck. It will help you. Yeah. So have a good space, a secure space to store these vehicles. We've had issues in the past whereby when we're trying to, you know, do some little renovations in one of our factories, they stole one of our um, batteries from the truck. One of the trucks they stole the battery. And I think there was a time too where they stole, okay, they stole diesel. Yes, they also stole diesel. They extracted diesel from the truck. So there are things like that that can happen. So you should just try to be aware of these things and make sure you secure the vehicles, taking measures. This is to even lock the, the um, shall I say, the fuel tank. Yes, you can do that too. And also, there was a time, speaking of that diesel issue, there was a time in the past where we used to buy diesel in bulk. But now you know with the economy of Nigeria, you can't buy that one. <laughs> there was a time when we used to buy diesel in bulk so that whenever our drivers are going out, we we'll put for them, then also put in the generator. But even with that, too, we observe that um, the person there or someone there was extracting the diesel. So try and make sure you secure your property. You know, if this business is a business you want to enjoy for a long period of time, you need to secure your property and make sure things like this don't happen. I think in the other video too I did about building the factory, I spoke about having security measures, like having CCTV cameras, having the security on ground and some other things like that. So if you put these things in mind, your trucks will last you a long period of time and some of these issues and minor minor challenges will be avoided. Now, when your drivers are going out, it is good for you, in short, before you even hire the drivers, yeah, it is good for you to educate them. I'll do a separate video on that. But it is good that you educate your drivers so that when they go out, they won't run into some kind of avoidable challenges and some issues like that which might occur. There was a time when one of our drivers went out and he went to supply water in one area like that. But the, the road there is not too good. So because of the load he carried, you know these hybrid trucks and there are mini trucks and the kind of potholes that were there, he was just entering, coming out, entering and coming out. And all of a sudden the vehicle knocked there. So the vehicle had to be there. They had to remove the water, put it on a wheelbarrow to supply the water first before the mechanic came, check the vehicle and you know the whole thing was just hectic. So this could have this could have been avoided if he was a little bit more careful when driving the truck. So yeah, you should try to educate your drivers too. So that whenever they go out, they'll be more careful when driving and they'll avoid potholes and things that will cause damages to the vehicles. So you just educate them, let them know that this vehicle is just like their own. It is what brings food to them. So if they are able to take care of the vehicle well, the vehicle will last a long period of time. Now also, um, you should also monitor your fuel, your oil. There's something they call first parade. So before you go out in the morning, just try and make sure that they check the vehicles, there is water in the radiator, they check the oil level, they check their tires, 
they check the strength of the vehicle, even warm itself just to hear the sound of the vehicle. By doing these minor minor things every morning, at least you will be aware of challenges or some issues that we know sometimes like with vehicles before an issue should arise from the sound of the vehicle you can be able to tell if your vehicle is okay or not so by carrying out these small small you know checks you'll be able to understand the you know quality and life of your vehicle if it is strong to carry out the day's job or it will need some minor repairs and maintenance now when you have distributors I think in one of my previous videos, I spoke about having distributors who distribute your product. Yes, in the video of bottled water, um, before you start bottled water. Now, when you have distributors, some distributors might ask you to give them their goods to help them with the distribution of your product. Sometimes they might ask for you to give them their goods they will be paying over time, or they might ask for a company vehicle or something like that. We've tried that in the past, but one challenge we found was that Although we gave the distributors vehicles and they were using it, but the remittance or, you know, once you have a vehicle like that, there's some kind of returns that you will expect for giving out these vehicles. So we saw that the returns were not forthcoming like the way we expected. So it kind of slowed down our projection, our profit projection when it came to those particular trucks. So similarly, before you go into any agreement or distribution that involves vehicles, at least there should be a clear outline of um, the agreement, those things that are required from the distributor and those things that are required from you too as the person giving out the vehicles for distribution. Try and draft out a formal legal agreement. If possible, if you have a lawyer, a company lawyer or so, you can also involve the person, which I also highly recommend. That if you have a business like this, at least have a lawyer or somebody you know who can help you with some of the legal issues, the unforeseen legal issues that might arise in the future. So by having legal counsel, they will be able to advise you on how to go about with distributors and maybe any future legal things that you need to do for the company in the future. And where your drivers are going out, please they should carry all their documents. That's vehicle papers, their driver's license, sticker, and any other thing that is required of them, local government papers. We've had to have discussions with our drivers sometimes because sometimes maybe they are trying to hurry and distribute products, they might be rushing, they forget maybe driver's license, they even forget phone, maybe forget um, local government papers or something. You know, all these things, there are things that are necessary when you're on the road. And you know some of these are law enforcement agencies, especially the ones in Nigeria. They they are looking forward to you violating some of these things. They are looking forward to you forgetting your papers. Even if you have the um, original copy and maybe you even have a photograph, you know you have it. They will still want you to be an offender because of the fine they will collect. So it is important that when you are going out, you always have these things in your vehicle, especially your papers. You should always have them in the vehicle because you don't know where you see them, you don't know where they will stop you. You know, sometimes they even set up tax force. Like I know the Artwork Association in Abuja here, there was a time when a tax force was set up to catch some of these vehicles that are selling water under or they are selling substandard products. So if you have all your documentation, you have all your papers, you know, you legit person, the legit company, what they are supplying is legit. Once you are on the road, you won't even fear all these um, law enforcement agencies and ticket people that will you know, stop you on the road. So it is important that you make all the necessary preparations before you begin distribution. Also, as you run your business, as you see money coming in daily, you should try and set up um, a savings account for your vehicles so this will help you save small funds gradually that will be used to carry out maintenance or to buy parts for the vehicles some issues might arise unforeseen issues sometimes it might even accident itself might happen although we are not praying for any of that but things like that do happen there's no how any business here you are going out supplying products from january to december that you won't have at least some minor minor issues even though it's oil you can save money aside 
so that by the time something like that arises you have some funds to be able to handle it also your drivers might be tempted to use your trucks for maybe other extra services maybe by doing some kind of side jobs doing pickup and the rest please try and educate them um, the Atwap Association do hold training sessions whereby they talk to drivers, they educate them of some of these things and the consequences to be faced when you know they violate some traffic rules and they do some extra jobs like this. Even their own safety tools are tricks. So try and encourage them, try and send them for trainings, try and have discussions with other manufacturers so that you can see how you can rub minds and you know some of, know some of all these things which they do that could potentially cause some challenges when running the business and there's also one thing that the road safety also require from um, police trucks like this they call it speed limiter so whenever I, although like especially the speed limiter we were not aware of it until when we fell into the hands of road safety officials you understand so it, it happens things like that the speed limiter is something naturally they would have told us before even entering the market or before climbing the roads with our vehicles but it was after we've already you know gotten into the business and we've already been distributing for a while all of a sudden one day they just held one of our vehicles and said that we don't have the speed limiter so you can make uh, arrangements for this so that all your vehicles can have the speed limiter so you can make arrangements to have the speed limiter installed and also a tracker so that in case maybe your vehicle gets stolen one day or maybe you know it gets stopped by the road safety officials you have all these things in place so um, those are just the major things you need to know before you acquire trucks for your pure water business and your water bottling business in Nigeria. If there is any question you have regarding this topic, you can leave it in the comment section and I will try as much as I can to respond to the questions. If you also want to support the YouTube channel, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And there is also membership. You can become a member of the channel so that if I have any forthcoming videos, any tips, any live sessions, any perks like that specific to the channel members, you will be a part of it.